Exactly. He's here to podcasting beast from the East with me, Professor John Gotti, the King of RG, the Troll Master, the Data Analyzer, the Jessica of his own fate. Yes, ladies and gentlemen, the Terminator. Yes, the man with a million names, Professor John Adrian Gotti, Mr. Omega, the Cleaner. I feel like you kind of threw the food from again in that whole thing. <laughs> I skipped Prophet, Prophet Thomas. <laughs> you did a lot. You did a lot. Um, I skipped. I skipped Prophet Thomas. I'm sorry, ladies and gentlemen. I skipped Prophet Thomas. But what's going on, brother? How was your weekend? I can't even do my shtick with you because of that. Completely <sighs> threw off the mojo. I for the reigning, oh. defending, undisputed podcasting champion. Our tribal beast, the head of the table, a fighter of hyper podcasting. That's something of squat. The fountain of squat. This sanitizer. Spread, spreads. Doc, please. How you doing, man? <laughs> oh, John Gotti. I'm definitely not sour. It's I should be exhausted, but I'm actually okay. The day's going by fast. Monday, good, good, clean weekend of you know sports. Uh, not all clean, I guess, yeah. depending on which news some, you were reading. There, there was some yeah, nasty was stuff that's happening. A lot of controversy. Yeah, a lot of controversy. But let's start with yeah. something that's smack dab in the middle. We talked about it last week. A little bit of WNBA news and action um but we had a to segue into that john Gotti let me know just two minutes ago that a pga tour announcer has been fired yeah, hey pj Hi, PJ Tour guy. You're fired. Mark Lai, a former. Oh, PGA he lied Tour too. Player. Oh my God, he's a liar. Also, go That's ahead. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. <laughs> a former PGA Tour winner who turned into a golf commentator was fired from his role as a series XM PGA Tour radio host over comments that he made about the WNBA. I mean, honestly, you did about both the WNBA and the LG, uh, LPGA tour as well, too. So Doc said he wanted raw reaction. I will provide the quotes, and then I will leave it open for discussion afterwards. He says, yes. you know, the LPGA tour to me is a completely different tour than it was 10 years ago. You couldn't pay me to watch. You really couldn't because I just... I couldn't relate at all. It's kind of like, you know, if you're a basketball player and I'm not trashing anybody, please don't take it the wrong way. Yeah, but I saw some highlights of ladies basketball. Ooh. Man, is there a gun in the house? I'll shoot myself then watch that. You know, oh. I love watching the men's basketball. I love watching the men's golf. I never used to like watching ladies golf, but I will tell you this. I've been up close watching these ladies play because I used to have a big function every year called the Lucas Cup. And I have and I have LPGA players and PGA Tour players. That was the quote. End quote. Oh, <laughs> man. You know, so tell this. Uh, I'll say this. I had a similar incident with a guy that was coming out to potentially be a coach with a uh, didn't see him this weekend so I was okay with it but some people are deeply rooted in old ways of thinking yes and then they need to come into at this point we're in 2022 so you need to just you need to come all the way up you know in this particular century and get out of that old way of thinking because the ladies really are dominating um, 
in the sports. You know, I mean, well, obviously, I'm and a, to add more context to Mark Y is 69 years old. Exactly. I figured I didn't even have to listen. I didn't even have to know his age to know he needs to come along in his way of thinking because um, there have been some great athletes come along, and I'm sure he's about to get roasted, toasted. Oh, well, I, mean, I don't think he's getting roasted and toasted as much. He because will. Not, bit. not as. It it takes he someone should, at least. someone he of should. social influence to to shed light towards it True. for him to get roasted. Because I'm pretty I mean, sure, like this isn't the first time someone trashed the WNBA. The WNBA has been, you know, a joke point for a lot of people mm-hmm. for many of years. And we, I mean, we've been go, talking about the past two seasons about you know pay gaps and pay equality. And all this other stuff. I mean, but let me ask this. I mean, putting your putting a gun to your head, like number one, that's bad. But that's, I mean, this is that this is up this is up there though with the Don Imus nappy headed hose comment. Mm-hmm. I mean, it's not you know, it's not no, it's pretty as direct. Okay. You're basically it's not as direct. It's not as direct. It's a backhand. It's it's, it's that's not backhanded. It's backhanded. So that's not it's backhanded. Like, that's that's oh closed God. fist stock. <laughs> I started. I think it started backhanded, but then he just like, oh, he he did close the fist a little bit, and you just can't do that. Um, and again, coaching ladies myself, um, I had to not change my way of thinking to where ladies can't do it because I know they can do it. Um, I think it's we 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 know plenty I, I, of excellent female basketball players. Who well, I'm not even talking about basketball. I'm talking about football. I mean, that's what I'm talking about football. So, yeah, so let's get different, about. you know. Yeah, you know. So it's, it's like I had to change my mindset where it's like, hey, if they can't do it today, that's where coaches have to say, hey, well, I'm gonna make sure you get it done tomorrow. Mm-hmm. You know, what I'm saying if you can't catch today, by tomorrow we're gonna make sure that you can catch. You know what I'm saying? So it's yep. like. He must just probably watch one probably bad series, which we've all seen. Like, you know, and I've seen that in all sports this year. Yeah, I was about to say, it's to literally a, every sport. <laughs> you turn to a game, and, you, and you've heard me say it on the show. You turn to a game, and all of a sudden, there's like three back to back turnovers. You're like, you know what? I'm not watching this anymore. And that's bad men's basketball, women's basketball, uh, football, like all sports. You just turn it on at the wrong time, and you'll see three freaking turnovers back to back and you're just like nah this is this not what I'm looking at I'm not looking this is not what I'm, I'm trying to watch right now um but I think it's just the fact that he singled out women athletes in multiple sports mm-hmm. um not just one sport but multiple sports um where they're already having a hard time because of like you said the pay gaps and it didn't help especially in the WNBA that we had the Becky Hammond news, yes. um, and that's kind of where it all, you know, I would say some of last week started going downhill, and we said we were going to talk about it, um, where Becky Hammond is going to be paid higher than, I, what was it, the top, I can't remember what it was, it was like the top, it was like She's going to be percent. making like four, four times more than a max player. The max, there we go, I didn't know, okay, so four times more than the max player to come coach. Um, and, you know, of course, some people have a problem with that. You know, obviously, one person in particular was Liz Cambridge or you know, Cambage, um, Cambage. I heard so many people say it differently. Uh, but, you know, Liz is one of the best players in the NBA now. I mean, she's not top, but she's one of the best. Yep. And, you know, <laughs> I think the ladies still have a genuine love of the game, um, but it's almost like their pay is taking advantage of their love for the game because I believe that many men at this particular so, point just to wouldn't. add more context. Hold on, hold on, hold on. Yeah. Hold on. Many men will take these huge pay cuts to play this game um, at this particular time. So you see the, you know, if the NBA was like, hey, you know, we're going to drop the salary down to match the women's or WNBA is going to be raised up to match the men's, you know, let's see if those same, you know, performance indicators would happen. But, um, and and, I, and I, I one of the problems with that is, you know, a lot of that increase of uh, cap space is due to like TV revenue. 
Yeah, that's true. And, and that's the part that hurts WA, WNBA the most is the fact that they're not on TV as often. You don't see them I mean, on like a Tuesday night on TNT type of thing. I mean, I kind of hate it because I feel like, and we talked about this in the past with the mm-hmm. markets and where, where teams are, but I felt like, and I still feel this way, college basketball is still like college female college basketball is still better than the WNBA as a viewing experience. Um, and I could be, I don't know if it's because of the spirit, like the school spirit, the crowds, you know, most likely the stands are I was dang say, it's full. definitely the crowd. Yeah. So it's like, you get the full experience that you want in a WNBA, but you or in college, you're just not getting it in the WNBA the way you want to until the playoffs come around or the finals yeah. come around. You know, it doesn't feel like it's an ascension. Like someone from yeah, college from like, the men's side going into the NBA, like you feel like it's an right. ascension. Now, whether it's, or not they exactly. become a bust. That's completely different. That's totally different. But completely different. It feels like based on what you're saying, Doc, and correct me if I'm wrong, if I'm putting words in your mouth, but it feels like it's not as much of an ascension. It's more of a lateral move. Yeah, a lateral move. And obviously we don't see how it is. I, I I've heard many stories about, you know, people playing in Italy and Germany and some of these other places and it, oh, yeah. you know, the love, the love is always there. Well, I mean, that and plus they get paid a lot more too. And speaking of which, and the thing I was going to add to it with the Becky Hammond salary, uh, mm-hmm. the Supermax ca- uh, salary cap for a WNBA player for this upcoming season is $228,094. Which for us, you know, Normal professionals, I mean, I would take that any day of the week. Absolutely. But I believe, based on Liz's comments, is like they still have to pay for their own insurance. They have yep. to pay for, uh, you know, traveling yep. and, you know, some of those other things. So, um, yeah, when she saw that contract, she was like, okay, WNBA. So we're going to have to, you know, view and change a few things. Um, but like I said, the ladies are getting better. They're getting taller. They're getting faster. They're able to shoot a lot better. Um, it's definitely time to start. I think they were always able to money. shoot better. Honestly, because because they have better mechanics. Well, when I say shoot better, I mean, I guess I'm saying shooting with a lot more range. Because before, it was mostly mid-range. Some people are shooting that quote-unquote Steph range now. I don't. I don't remember seeing that when the WNBA oh, first yeah. came out. Oh well, yeah, I think so that's, that's more why I'm, of, again. That's, yeah, that's yeah, that's more uh, of an exactly. evolution. But the evolution of WNBA didn't happen at the same time that the evolution of the NBA came out. So it wasn't a whole bunch of people shooting three. Yeah, it wasn't a whole bunch of shoot, people shooting threes in WNBA until recently. But that wasn't at the same pace as the NBA, which is completely fine because I would say that the WNBA does play play a more structured, systematic offense where they're still really focused on ball movement. So, uh, but um, again, I'm happy with the product. I think it's getting better and better. Um, I'm hoping that Liz, who just so happened to let the world know that she may be signing with the LA Sparks. Yeah, I feel like that's, uh, you know, to give a middle finger to the Aces. Because mm-hmm. she's like, well, I mean, if you're not going to try to take care of us, like, I'm going to a bigger market. Exactly. Even though, I mean, Las Vegas is a pretty, pretty big market. I mean, they're they're up there. I know it's not just California, but I think Vegas is up there. I mean, why else would the Raiders move from Oakland to Las Vegas? So obviously, the, the potential there. for it to become a major market. It's not a major market yet. I think when you think about the amount of people, then we're going to move on, but you think about the amount of people that go to Vegas, I think that's what makes it a pretty big market is that people are visiting on and off. Even we went to a basketball game. <laughs> we were in Vegas. <laughs> yeah, but that was so early, though. Like... Still, still, it counts. You know, if it fits, it ships. Hey, right? come on. Don't, don't downplay it. But Johnny, let's move on to the gridiron. We have some coaching news. Um, we have some coaching rumors. Uh, we had a lot of things going on. But right before we get to that, um, how did you feel 
about this Alvin Kamara news arrested for battery after the Pro Bowl. So, what the absolute bleep? So, to add more context to that, uh, apparently, <laughs> allegedly, he actually allegedly. got arrested for it on Saturday before the Pro Bowl. Before the Pro Bowl, okay. So it yes. said that. Okay, so all the stories were saying after the Pro Bowl, but continue on. Yes, but I oh, guess he was they allowed. To... Okay, yes. Go ahead. I'm sorry. Yeah, no, no, you, no, no, you're no, probably gonna say good. it. No, you're probably no, gonna say it. Go ahead and say I, it. I wasn't. I wasn't. I wasn't gonna say it. Okay. So he spent the night in jail. Um, he uh, was allowed to play for the uh, play the Pro Bowl, and this goes back to what we keep talking about. This double standard, this huge leeway that we give a lot of athletes when they commit crimes of this nature. Hmm. Now, granted, no one cares about the Pro Bowl, but at the same time, if he got arrested on Saturday for this, like, unless he, and I don't think he posted bail until like Monday. Yes, yeah, at Monday. So the fact that he was so allowed to play on Sunday, big red flags. Yeah, I'm not 100% sure. Obviously, this is one of those stories we may have to wait until other things come out. Yep. But um, this says he was arrested on Sunday, but the incident happened Saturday night. Uh, so the victim, I don't think, so I don't think the victim said, hey, it was Alvin Kamara who did this, right? So then he went ahead and, and played in the Pro Bowl. Like, I mean, I don't care. I, you know, maybe I punched this person in the face and, you know, they would get close, they spilled a drink or whatever it was. Like, I mean, you can't just go around punching nobody in the face no matter what. You just can't do it. Um, and the fact that you're Alvin Kamara, we all know you got the nose ring, you got the locks, like you, you're you Alvin Kamara. We know that. They probably, it's a possibility they targeted you because you're Alvin Kamara. It's highly possible. Uh, but nonetheless, you struck this person somehow, and it resulted in him being hurt. And maybe the police had to go and do some kind of investigating. They can't just say, "Hey, it's Alvin Kamara." Like, you know, you ha- if you're gonna bring in Alvin Kamara, you have to have some some footage, some pictures, something. You can't just go to an L player and be like, "Hey, you did this." Like, I, I that I can't believe. Uh, you, they had to go back to the club and look at video. By the time they did that, I could see him had already played in the Pro Bowl. And then it's like, hey, you got 24 hours to turn yourself in kind of thing. Because uh, how do find Alvin Kamara, right? <laughs> you know what I'm saying? So he could have been logged on. Um, but, yeah, you're absolutely right. I do want to know more about this story. And I'm hoping yeah, that they police, release more The police were called. I'm looking at some other articles about it. They were called uh, Saturday late afternoon. Yeah, five p. It says five fifty p. It says five fifty p.m. local time. Yep. Um, and again, uh, it says, well, it says a victim is beating, being battered at a nightclub. Who goes to a nightclub at five fifty though? This had to be. That's what I'm that's saying. Kinda yeah, that's kind of weird. That's weird. That's what I'm saying. So that's what I'm saying. There's something going on there, because it's like I don't know too many people who go to the club that early, and I don't even know any clubs that are open, open that early. That early. Um, but because many of those clubs yeah. don't open till like nine ish. But they made sure to say that he participated in the Pro Bowl, like I said. Oh, yeah. Um, and then that next, I guess Sunday, he said, "Hey, I go ahead and turn myself in and gonna go from there." So yeah. we'll see. But oh, moving no, on from that, Johnny. Yikes. Yeah, you want to, you want to talk about yikes? I'm so glad you freaking said yikes because yes, is exactly what the Miami Dolphins have done this weekend. And I'm really trying not to play Mike McDaniel, who I've called Mike McDonald's all yeah. weekend, uh, because ba da ba ba ba, they're freaking having it their way. Uh, this is not an advertisement. McDonald's, by all means, they don't oh, even use the bathroom gosh, at McDonald's, no. um, let alone eat there. But McDon- McDonald's, <laughs> McDaniel 38, I mean, and I said this yesterday, like, it's not he hasn't paid his 
dues. I don't want people to think that I'm hating on him because, I mean, he's been an assistant for quite some time. He started the intern route, um, which is so funny because we talked about this over the weekend with Mr. McAfee, Mr. Pat McAfee on his show. Um, where he was interviewing, dang, I can't remember what defensive back that was, um, but it doesn't matter. I mean, what he said was important. Um, in the interview, it was talk about black coaches and the actual, was it Brian Poole? I can't remember. I can't remember. Um, but anyway, he was interviewing a defensive back, and uh, they were talking about the coaching hierarchy, the coaching schedule, the coaching, um, I guess, paths that different coaches take and uh, he was saying that you kind of get penalized for not going and becoming you know right out of college skipping the NFL and going right to be you know maybe a game coordinator or Mm -hmm. you know some some low on a totem pole role where you can start paying your dues and I'm not saying that McDaniel didn't pay his due I'm just saying that you let a guy go who was on the brink of the playoffs. And I know we've we've seen this many times yeah. in NFL and NBA. I mean, and it just so happens one of the coaches we're gonna talk about yes. is involved with that. So yes. Uh, co- but I just don't know if this was their first choice. Obviously the 49ers get a uh, two third round compensatory picks, which is great for them. But I just don't know if Kellen Moore or Daniel were good fits for what the Dolphins are trying to do. Um, yes, I know it's all about Tua's development, but mm-hmm. you want to get a coach that has experience for a rookie quarterback is now you have that ten, you have that situation where you might put him in a situation and he'll be a, two different coaches in his first five years. You like Jameis was. Remember, Jameis had like four different coaches. Yep. And that stunts their growth. And the person you was talking uh, about was Darius Butler, by the way. Darius Butler. I don't know. I don't know why I think Brian Poole. But <laughs> Darius Butler, there you go. Um, and he made, you know, he made a lot of good points, I mean, about coaches. And, it, and we talked about, you know, the Tony Dungy tree last week. And – Surprise, surprise. It's not Jim Caldwell, but it's Lovey Smith who is being now all of a sudden considered for the Texas head job, which he's oh, already no. there. But 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 remember though, remember though, apparently, according to the Texans, he was part of the process the whole time. But we didn't hear we didn't hear a single word about Lovey Smith being a candidate oh, for the head coach God. position of the Texans. Yeah. Until yeah. Saturday. No, until I heard, Sunday. It was last night, actually. It was all Josh McCown. And then I forget it, the other it was, it was It was Josh McCown. Gannon. Um, Brian Flores was in there. Um, I heard, all, you know, only person they mentioned keeping around on the staff was Pep Hamilton. I do remember that a couple weeks ago. Um, but ask me, Johnny, if Pep Hamilton was ever considered as a head coaching candidate. No. Yeah. He was not like, why would you want to keep, and I said this, why would you want to keep a coordinator around and hire a different coach? If you like Pep Hamilton so much, then why don't why you just you make promote? Pep Hamilton? Exactly. Why don't you make Pep Hamilton the head coach? Um, that would have made most sense. But now all of a sudden, Lovey Smith mm-hmm. is in the talks of being the head coach. So now like, Hey, we can't hire Josh McCown or it's going to look bad on us. And I said that last week. I mean, what are they going to do? They can't hire Brian Flores and they can't not hire Brian Flores and away with this. If they hire Josh McCown over Brian Flores, yikes. Yes. <laughs> you understand? Because, no, and this again, no disrespect to Josh McCown, he might do a great job. Uh, he's been an assistant uh, uh, backup quarterback for a long time, which technically is an assistant coach. I mean, you know, that's just what they do. They hold the clipboards. They they have the, you know, the headset on. But Josh McCown over Pep Hamilton, Josh McCown over Brian Flores, and Josh McCown, even old freaking Cully, who they yeah. already had, you know. Who, who should have been fired, by the way. Who should not have been fired. Um, so that's now. Just, that's just the way it works, to, man. To add more meat to, this, to these uh, potatoes. 
Yeah. Now that it looks like they're going to be hiring Lovey Smith to be the Texans head coach, Josh McCown is most likely going to join Lovey Smith's coaching staff. They said at least for the 2022 season. So now speculation has been occurring within the Twitterverse and probably somewhere within ESPN, but I don't watch that crap. Mm-hmm. This is a transitional hire. Yeah. And that's the problem with the black coaches. It's like they, they're getting that transitional hire tag for the person that they, they really want. And mm-hmm. Well, this one would be for. even more blatant. And I feel bad for Love because I, I mean, if all indicate if all points that have been indicated are true, then you know Love will probably have a year or two, you know, mm-hmm. like you had in Tampa. And I, don't get me wrong, in Tampa it was a tough situation to come into. Um, I was excited for him to come in, but it was a tough situation it was. all around. Um, and this is an even tougher situation. He's going to yeah. need five. He's going to need five years. This is a five-year project. Um, and a lot of teams don't get five years. Nope. Like a lot of the Cowboys, five like, years. like the Cowboys was maybe like think about the Cowboys, maybe two to three year project, but they having to turn around pretty early. Um, Dolphins, I don't know. I don't know because we gotta find out what's gonna happen with that investigation. Yeah. So, I mean, some of these jobs that people have taken, it's years, you know, and, and if the upper management don't have the patience, then, you know, Lovey's out. Like, I, again, I wouldn't take the job. If he's an associate head coach, I would stay that, you know, let some other sucker take this one. <laughs> Honestly, <laughs> I much. completely agree with you. Like, this is a yeah. no-win situation for Lovey. Even if they help yeah. the Texans make it to the playoffs next year, they're still going to get rid of him. Exactly. Exactly. But John. And of course, the last thing, real quickly. Um, oh, yeah. I'm the Packers sorry. are now expected to hire oh, yeah, Raiders interim coach Rich Bisaccia. Which I think, coach. I think the Raiders, um, no, or did the Raiders have to give up anything? I don't think so. No. Uh, I'm surprised. Just a special yeah. teams coach. I mean, obviously. No, you know. no, no. He's really good with special teams. Yeah. No, I mean, obviously, but it's like, man, like, you know, to go from top of the hill to back to the coordinator, it sucks so bad. I would have been okay with the Texans hiring Basachia. You know what I'm saying? Like, I would have been okay with that. The I would have been fine Basachia. with that. But, yeah, but the fact like, that the Texans were trying to bring in Josh McCown, who doesn't have a single year of experience in the NFL. Again, a, a backup QB, either holding the clipboard. I get it. The It's enticing, but it would be a media nightmare to pass on Brian Flores, Lovey Smith, even again, even Pep Hamilton. Yep. Um, you know, you got left with, you still got, you know, B-N-M-E. all the other coaches. You have the enemy, like you have, and not just the black coaches. I mean, you have, you have a wide, you got, you have a Jason, lot of, you got Jason Garrett out there. Out there. You, can even, you can even bring Jason Garrett in and it still would be fine over McCown. <laughs> you yeah. know what I'm saying? Um, but I don't know. Uh, they just need to get back to what they they were before. Um, under Lovey Smith, like I think I sent you earlier, the defense wasn't terrible. They only gave about four, three hundred yard total games. Only three uh, games over a hundred yards rushing total. Uh, so it wasn't bad. Uh, under Lovey. we'll have to just kind of see where they can go from here. Uh, but yes, Johnny. I know that people heard this podcast on their favorite podcast platform, but if they didn't, they can always go to our website at www.debateamongstfriends.com to review this episode as well as all the previous. Be sure to tune in tomorrow as we go over more news, more analysis, and the reads.